Uh, do we have another question? Uh, you ladies had questions. So we, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, Q and A. Okay. Okay then. So let's look at the book of Mark, chapter nine, please. Mark, chapter nine. And then let's look at this concerning about salted with fire. Look at the book of Mark, chapter nine. Uh, but because uh, I'm not turning there right now, if any of you can. Uh, read that verse for me. Find and read the verse for me. That'd be great. That way um, we can immediately get rolling here because I'm erasing this board. And if you find it quickly and read it. Mm-hmm. All right, so then in Mark chapter 9, verse 49, we see right here that the Lord Jesus Christ, he mentioned that it seems like salt seemed to contribute more concerning uh, burning here, is, if I remember correctly. For, anyone, for everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its, his saltness, wherewith will he season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Okay, so we see right here that the context is going to be referring to hell here. How do we know that? Because of verse 42 all the way through 48. It talks about burning in hell for eternity. So then, uh, this is going to, there's obviously no white marker for salt here, so I'm going to put pepper right here. <laughs> so this is salt, not pepper, okay? So let's put here salt. And for those of you who are online going to scream out pepper, I'm going to just write down here, pepper, no. <laughs> you can get it, okay? <laughs> All right, anyways. Anyways, so we see that salt is used right here. And then the Bible talks about in verse 43, if your hand offends you, cut it off. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then you can enter into life maimed and you can burn. Verse 44, where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. Verse 45, if your foot offends you, cut it off. Uh, if uh, you don't, then you can burn into hellfire. So whatever body part that sins, you have to cut it off. And then verse 47, this includes the eye. So salt, what we can see in this passage right here, this is just going to be the best guess that I've got. But concerning salt, I do know that when we... Throughout, throughout the Bible, when it mentions concerning salt, it actually mentions about Christians who can use this salt. Salt does two things. One, it, uh, the tastiness, right? The saltiness, right? But also, it also, it tastes good. There's your positive aspect. But then there's a negative aspect as well. What does it do? It hurts because it's supposed to heal you. It's supposed to heal you. It's supposed to purify and clean. Now, here's something to understand. Mark specifically mentioned this word, which is very interesting. We're going to look at the book of Matthew. Keep your hand here. Keep your hand here. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 3. Matthew, chapter 3. In verse 50, we see the positive aspect here. Because it's not referring to hurt, bitterness, etc. This is referring to what? Peace with one another. So basically, if you're hanging out with a fellow brother in Christ, why are you hanging around him? Man, he's salty, that's why. Mm -hmm. So the conversation, just salty. Yeah. He's a salty guy. Salty, fun, loving brother in Christ. So that's a corny way to say it. I just said corny now. So, But anyways, it's corny, salty, whatever. But anyways, right here, the point is, is that that's the kind of idea it's giving. Is that when you're enjoying fellowship with one another and then that kind of peace, and not only that, when you season it, people get blessed by your saltiness. So you got to realize this. They, got, they can't see you as someone that's uh, bitter 
and sour, they've got to see you as something salty that they're attracted to. So if you chase someone out of the church and in soul winning and street preaching, you better check your heart on that one. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that you're not going to offend them. One day you will offend them. You can make it bitter. You can become sour to them because salt also hurts. But you got it has these two things. And if you see so much of this one, that's why you got no peace amongst the people around you. That's how our church survived. That's how our internet survived. That's how our street preaching survived. Our visitation survived. Because we show to the world we're peaceable people. We're not some kind of rebel rousers causing a ruckus and deliberately causing problems and we're going to overthrow the government. See, we're not those kind of people. We're peaceable people. They see that. Oh, they're just religious fanatics, you know. I mean, they love, they love people. They're nice guys. They're peaceful people. Uh, you know, so they're just harmless. They're just religious fanatics. Leave them alone, those weirdos. See, that's what we want. See, that's what we want. So that's the kind of testimony we give is that even though they don't like us for being religiously fanatic, they at least know that we're loving people, we're peaceful people. So they're just harmless. Leave them alone. Now, the thing is this, is that that's what we see at verse 50, whereas right here at, at verse 49... Everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. So now right here, we see that it's going to be a fire sacrifice. So you have your hand in Matthew 3. Go to Ezekiel 43 as well. Ezekiel chapter 43. We're going to look at two passages right here. We're going to look at two passages right here. Look at Ezekiel chapter 43, and then we'll look at verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 43, and then we'll read verse 24. Now notice right here, what do they do with the sacrifices? Because it relates to sacrifice right here. So we see that sacrifice is mentioned, and then the salt is supposed to be cast into there because it makes the sacrifice better. And notice that this is the case at the book of Ezekiel. They do this. And this will take place in the millennium. In the millennium. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord, and the priest shall cast salt upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Now notice it says right here in verse 22, and they shall what? Clean, uh, yeah, a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar, right? It's cleansing. It's like a purging. Verse 23, And when thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullet without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish, and thou shalt offer them before the Lord, and the priest shall cast salt upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. So within this cleansing process and this sacrifice offering process, salt is associated with this. Why is that? Because salt can also purify. We know that. But it hurts. Why does it hurt them? Because we're purifying them. When we preach against sin, right? When we preach against heresy out there, we rebuke false prophets. You know what it does? It hurts. But it's for purification. Here's one that's for peace. Here's one that's for purifying. Now, I have two theories in mind. So I can't say this for a fact, but I have two theories in mind. One will be concerning as a doctrinal statement that it will be referring to Matthew chapter 3. Notice what the Bible says at verse 12. This is very interesting. Verse 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly, what? Purge his floor in relation to what? And gather his weed into the garner, but he will burn up the, what? Chaff with what? It said unquenchable fire. Doesn't that match with Mark chapter 9? that we read, unquenchable fire. Look at verse 48, right before it talks about salt in the fire. Verse 48, where the worm dieth not and the fire is what? Not quenched, unquenchable fire. That's undoubtedly hell, as a matter of fact. And then verse 49 just matched up with this. Why? Because Matthew 3 told you it's a purging. Catholics talk about purgatory, but they got the wrong idea. Purgatory is eternal. That's what it is. That's hell. That ain't no fairy tale myth purgatory in between place where you burn for 
several millions or thousands or hundreds of years. No, it's not, it's not that. If there's a purgatory, in translation of that, that is hellfire. That's not some Catholic mythical fairy tale. This is a real hellfire that's eternal. Why is that? Why, that's pretty obvious. Because God cannot allow sin in his creation. But the soul is eternal, and you're eternally infected with sin. So what can God do to keep it pure? That's why you have to burn forever. That's sobering, isn't it? That's sobering right there. And the second theory is this, is that it's very interesting concerning sacrifice right here. That in verse 49, everyone shall be salt with fire and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. And then at verse 50, it's in relation to a Christian. So what we could perhaps see here as a picture is concerning a Christian who is on the sacrifice for God because he is represented as the salt. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter uh, 5, 6, and 7 in the Sermon on the Mount that ye are the salt of the earth. So it's the saved people. Saved people are the salt. And then Paul, he uses it as a Christian application at Romans 12 that you are a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. Jesus, what did he say to uh, the disciples James and John? You will uh, be baptized uh, with suffering. That's what he said. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 1, the Bible likens suffering to what? Fiery trial. Suffering is likened to trial. So we can see here as a picture, a second theory is that this can picture a saved believer who is a sacrifice to the Lord as a salt, and aren't we going through such sacrifice to the Lord right now in this world? Yeah, we are, but we're giving that as a sweet incense to the Father. So you got to realize this, whether you're saved or lost, here's the bottom line to this whole thing. The bottom line is whether you're saved or lost, you're going to be a sacrifice to God either way. Think about that for a while. Okay, then.